Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. And um, nice to see you again. I've just had a stupid idea. And normally when I have a stupid idea, it's usually best to film it. So here we are. I've been wandering around the fish room and I've been feeding some of these. These are live blackworms that I picked up at the auction the other week. Um, fantastic food. If you can get your hands on blackworms, yeah, every fish loves them. It's not just for the babies and the fry, it's for yeah, every fish will go for them. Fantastic food, really good nutritionally really easy to keep. So I bought a bunch of it a week ago, keep it in the fridge, keeps it going for a couple of weeks in the fridge. You can feed it to your fish uh, en masse if you want. So the, the worms just bury into the substrate and they'll poke their heads out every now and again and opportunistically the fish will come on and dum, 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 eat it all up. But I'd love to have a culture going for this and I've tried to do it two or three times in the past with limited success. Um, the best success I had was when I had a tank that was on a constant drip um, and I just kind of forgot about it and left it going and the worms were fine and they kept going for a while. When I've done it in the past with small tanks, with small filters, laziness got the better of me and the, the cultures did not last. So, as I was feeding things and moving things around, I found this box and I dropped it and all the contents fell out and I went, Rrr! and I just kind of dumped it there and I went, oh! It sits there, which just so happens to be above um, my water outlet. So I have water coming in above it and I have water that I get rid of below. So I can set this up on a constant drip in this little shallow box, overflow into this. Don't have to worry about it. Free food forever. So my plan is I'm just going to get this little tank overflow, drill a hole in this box um, that will, well, probably that way around actually, that will let water, I don't need a lot of water for the worms, you kind of want it to be shallow, anything more than that's just a waste. I could set this in a tank, but then that would just be wasting the tank and I don't have all that much space left in the fish room. So I'm going to let this as an overflow, and put a little bit of sponge on there so the worms don't just disappear. And falling it into the bucket and then I can have a water dripping on top of it, a thin layer of gravel, add the worms, we should be good to go. It really should be as simple as that. Like I say, we could do this in any of my tanks, but then I'm taking up tank space for fish that I might want to do something with. This, just kind of happy accident that it happens to be the right size above that. I can still get access to it to do all the other jobs I need to do. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Warm dinner. So that should be plenty deep enough. It's only going to be two or three inches of that. I just want a layer of these pebbles. And the pebbles are just like one or two layers deep, if that. It's just somewhere for the worms to anchor themselves into. Um, that looks pretty good to me. And all I've done is added an extra T on my water line with a little bit of a, a valve here. I can control the flow. So I'm just filling it up now to see how it works. But if I want to dial it in and just have it as a drip or a small flow, easy enough to control. But so far, so good. It is just dripping straight into my water butt there. So I need to tighten this a little bit. But otherwise, the theory is good. So this is generally how it will work. This is my fish room HME. It's the heavy metal axe filter that dechlorinates all the water and does the whole fish room. I've just taken a T piece off of that, which is here. For the moment, just clamped there, but I could put it in with a float valve or something, but it's fine. So it's just doing a little dribble at the moment. Um, I've just stuck this bit of sponge on here. It's just sitting on top of the overflow there. 
that's fine. And there you've got what, two or three inches worth of water. Perfectly fine. Uh, and then it's just dribbling over. I'll need to attach some kind of hose just to make sure it does always dribble straight down. In the most part, it's going into the overflow. So what, there's a sump pump in here that you won't be able to see because it's too dark. That when I drain tanks into here and it fills up, pumps it out into some big containers in the garden that are used to water the garden. But that's kind of it. It's just a happy accident that this happened to fit. So, as you can see here, I've got kind of one, two, th two or three stones thick here. It might be a bit too much. Um, but I'll put the worms in here. These are perfectly happy to live in fresh water, these worms. They will survive here, hopefully colonise and hopefully multiply. So let's get the worms added. So these ones have been acclimatised. They're in the same sort of water. And they're in. This might be the only challenge is I should probably have used white gravel so I could actually tell where the worms are and what they're doing. But I'll split them up a little bit and get a couple of clumps moving in different spaces. I've got some more as well so I've got another bag or two that I can get this colony started off with. But essentially, kind of that's it. Just move them through. And I'm not sure how much of this is true, but I've been told we don't really breed as such. That you just go in and stir it up every now and again, and it breaks them up, and one worm becomes two or three. Um, so I'll get all the worms added, and then we'll talk about how we're going to make this work and harvest it and stuff like that. I've turned the water off just hopefully so you can see them. But that's kind of what I'm expecting. Bunch of worms. One end of the substrate, one end out looking for food. Um, and if I keep, like I say, I've tried this a few times before with mixed results. But the best results I've had is with lots of fresh water. And um, quite often you'll see tutorials and stuff on YouTube saying, oh yeah, just get a tank, get a small tank, put a substrate, put in a sponge filter. For me, that didn't work. Maybe I was doing it wrong, but all that happened there was <laughs> the worms just got lost in the sponge filter. Um, so there's no filter in this as such, it's just going to have a constant drip of running water, keeping the water fresh. Um, I had it in a bigger tank, that seemed to be better as well. But a bigger tank with more um, surface area for the substrate seemed to be the best results. Um, I have made a bit of a boo-boo where I've put in some spirulina pellets which have just instantly disintegrated. So I'm not sure I like them. Um, but I have in the past fed them on just like algae wafers, spirulina tablets, spirulina powder. Um, these are the sticky spirulina things that I just had lying around. Yeah, those things. So they're probably not the best. Although the worms are going for them a little bit. Um, so, yeah. That is my setup. With the tube flowing down into the waste sump. Uh, and this is the, the water here. I'm kind of going to run it on like just a soft dribble if I can get it. That's too much. But just a little bit more than a drip, like that kind of thing. That should give me decent results. So I have made videos about um, like baby brine shrimp, how much I love feeding that and most fish will go for that as well. But that is a little bit of a faff, whereas this is just going to sit there, hopefully sit there and just keep providing me food. I don't have to do anything. Um, there's no changing water, putting in salt, mixing up anything like that. Similarly, white worms, grindle worms, all that kind of thing. They're great, but they're only really suitable for like really, really small fish. So all my fish will appreciate this. And if I'm going to start doing more and more breeding projects, this is exactly the kind of food that will get your fish into breeding condition. When it comes to harvesting, this. This is going to be your friend. And what we're going to use this for is, I'm going to leave it a few days just now, but 
basically stir this around the substrate. So empty, stir it around the substrate, slightly lifting it, and you'll just suck up a bunch of worms. And then they can be put into little pouches or whatever, kept in the fridge if you want. It's fantastic. Um, and that stirring of the substrate and lifting them into the, the pipette. This isn't a pipette, what would you call this? Mega pipette. Um, that is what will break them up and start creating more and more new worms. So, like I say, I'm not an expert on this. I have failed at this before. I've had success at this before. This is what I'm trying. If you want to see how it works, obviously you're going to have to click that subscribe button. But if you have any ideas, if you've been doing this for a long time, longer than me, and you spotted an obvious flaw, um, something you might be thinking about is, Graham, we've not got a heater. It's going to be too cold for them all. This room is heated. Graham, it's going to be too hot for them. It's not heated that much. <laughs> um, this should be the Goldilocks temperature. It should be okay in there. Um, but like I say, if you, if you see anything else in there, go, no, that's a problem. That's not going to work. Something else is going to go wrong. By all means, let me know. Let me know in the comments or come and join me on a Friday night at 9 p.m. Most Friday nights. We do a live stream. You can ask me anything. Tell me where I've gone wrong and all that kind of stuff. But until then, I'm quite happy with that. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Bye.